Let's calculate some YouTube statistics. YouTube's interface makes it difficult to pick channels at random. There's not a master list of channels anywhere, and channels are given non-sequential IDs that you can't generate or iterate through. So my source for channels to look at comes from a website called channelcrawler.com. By default, a simple search on that site returns channels ordered by the date of their most recent upload. So you can just grab results in sequence and you get channels with a wide variety of sizes, topics, languages, etc. Now, some statistics like human height are normally distributed other statistics are highly asymmetrical and most YouTube statistics fall into this category. And that means that the maximum value a metric can take is in light years away from the range where 90% of the values fall. And these large values skew the average value of the metric to a point where it becomes very misleading. So when I summarize YouTube channel statistics, I never give the full min to max range and I never give the average because that's completely meaningless. Instead, I cite the 10th, 50th and 90th percentiles. Only 10% of channels measure below the 10th percentile, 50% below the 50th, and 90% below the 90th. So 80% or 4 and 5 channels will fall between the 10th and 90th percentile values, and I'll refer to this as the 80% range. The 50th percentile is more commonly called the median value. Half of channels will measure less than the median, and the other half will measure higher than the median. So according to common statistical wisdom and things like confidence intervals, you do in fact need a sample size of at least 100. So I took a sample of 100 channels with between 1,000 and 10,000 subscribers from channelcrawler.com and calculated how many subscribers they got per channel view. The median value was 0 0.00579 subs per view or one sub for every 173 views. Watch time isn't publicly reported. That makes it hard to see when people meet the 4,000 hours requirement. I'm too clever for that to stop me. You see, I know that it's not that uncommon for people to upload a celebration or thank you video when they get monetized. So first I did a normal YouTube search for those videos and grabbed the 100 most recent. The only problem is that that's a biased sample. Not every kind of channel is equally likely to upload a video when they get monetized. But based on the sub counts of those channels, I was able to determine that the median watch hours for each sub was 2.91. I used this value to scale the sub rates from that earlier unbiased sample. So 0.0018 to 0.0237 subs per view implies an 80% range of 0.00525 to 0.0689 watch hours per view with a median of 0.0168. So it's typical to get one watch hour for every 60 views or for every 173 views, about one sub and three watch hours. Knowing that and knowing that watch hours almost always exceed subs, we know you need around a few hundred thousand views to qualify for monetization, but you only see a channel's current views reported, not its views over time. So to figure out how long it takes channels to qualify for monetization, we need a formula for views over time. And that formula is is views after a given number of months equals growth rate times month squared. Let me explain why this formula is true. Intuitively, growth is driven by creative output. It's the product of how frequently you upload and how good your uploads are, at least according to YouTube. Literally, average videos uploaded a month times average views per video per month. Expressed mathematically, this is views divided by videos divided by months times videos divided by months. And this is the growth rate in the formula. You can see this expression simplifies to views over months squared. And when we substitute it for the growth rate and multiply it by months squared, we just get views. So we can divide a channel's total views by the months since its first upload squared to determine its growth rate. Doing this for my sample of 100 channels, I found the median growth rate to be about 210. I also calculated the median growth rate for a sample of channels recommended on my own YouTube homepage and found it to be 137 times higher. So while for the typical YouTuber, it takes three and a half months to reach 10 subscribers, in that amount of time, the channels you know and love were already monetized, and this creates a huge misperception around how hard growing a channel typically is. Based on the typical growth rate and standard range of watch hours per view, median time for monetization is three and a half years. The 80% range is 19 months to seven years. I also took a sample of 100 channels with at least 1,000 subscribers in between 100 and 200,000 views that were very likely to have recently applied for monetization. I then looked them up on socialblade.com to see their estimated monthly earnings. The median range was $2 to $27 per month.
Because new YouTube accounts get created and deleted all the time, and because programmatically crawling YouTube takes time, and because larger channels are easier to find, channel crawlers results slightly underrepresent how many very small channels there are. So to get a sample including the full range of channel sizes, I started with another sample of channels from channel crawler and looked up accounts commenting on their most recent upload to get a new set of channels. Looking at the subscriber counts of these channels, it's clear that it's not uncommon for a channel to have one or two subscribers and yet no content whatsoever. So to find channels that were making a minimum attempt to be real YouTube channels, I filtered my channel set to accounts with at least one upload and at least three subscribers. From this set, I could see that about one in 10 channels were likely qualified for monetization and one in four had less than nine subscribers.